Hey guys, uh, if you're listening to this, I'm assuming that you're a fan, and thank you for it. I, um, I've been meaning to do this for a while now. This is the penultimate health update. This is the second to last. And, uh, it's a fairly meaningful update for me to make. It's the second to last update, because I'm not out of the woods yet, but I am and have been, uh, I believe for some time now, firmly on the path of full uh, recovery, of full health, of, of living a, a normal uh, quote-unquote life going forward uh, as soon as I'm out of it. How long that's going to take? Well, it's been, a, it's been a mystery this whole time, and it's not an exact science, and I have chosen to do it the, the hard way, uh, the slow way, the, oh goodness, the healing up way. Um, but I've been putting this off for a while, and uh, I decided to finally do it today. I'm kind of caught in a weird position, and, oh my goodness, Kitty just can't wait to talk as soon as I start talking. She's been silent all morning. Uh, I've been put in kind of an awkward position yesterday, and it turned out to be a really great one. Uh, so just yesterday I was uh, taking some water bottles out to recycle. I have to do two things. Uh, I have to drink tons of water, and it has to be uh, filtered, has to be purified. And I originally did it with a purifier, but I just gave up because some days I drink four liters, 4.5, 5 liters of uh, water a day, and then all the ice I would add to it to make it cold, yada yada. I gave up uh, and just started buying bottles of water and putting them in the fridge, uh, 24, 36 packs, etc., to keep it cheap. And uh, that, of course, leads to lots of dumping out of water bottles. So this is a pretty ordinary chore for me uh, to recycle each and every last water bottle. That is my mission, and I attempt to do it with great fidelity. <clears throat> so it's the middle of the afternoon, and uh, as I'm leaving, there's a note on my door, on my metal security door, and there's never one there. So I'm like, whoa. Uh, and I know it's not from the landlord, and uh, I know that my rent's not late, so uh, I'm hoping that it's uh, that rare, beautiful thing where someone's trying to save my soul. Uh, alas, it was not. Someone is going to be by to spray for bugs today. Well, uh, part of my health issues is that they were gravely compounded by my mental health issues. Uh, my PTSD, and they still are. Without going into a mental health update too far down the rabbit hole, my PTSD makes it so that I have a lot of trouble not going down lines or paths, uh, literally, that I've gone down before. For instance, if I need to wash my car, and I'm in a pretty bad PTSD place where I'm pretty locked down, the only places I can take my car are places I've been to before, even if they're much further away. For some reason, going down a new road or going down a new location sometimes uh, when I'm having a bad episode is just very, very difficult for me, and uh, sometimes requires... Uh, an exacting force, or a lot of uh, gathering of speed on my end to try and make it over the emotional obstacle. So, with that in mind, uh, seeing that I suddenly was going to have somebody come by tomorrow and having to make the choice, do I let them in and spray, which is what I want them to do, yes, more hygienic, uh, better, etc., or do I let them go? Do I, do I pretend uh, that I'm not here uh, and just kind of like duck them? And they'll spray around the building and I've not seen a bug inside this place, so maybe that's good enough, right? 
And PTSD always says go for option two. Like if there's a hidey hole, hide in the hole. Oh, that's a great choice, says uh, the PTSD. Uh, <clears throat> I, I put these two factors together, talking about a physical health update, to say that my vacuum broke down uh, in January, and I found it very, very difficult to get a new one. And in fact, I have not been able to ship something to this location since I did the sound tiles, since something went wrong there, which shouldn't have. Uh, I actually... Um, I, I, I actually haven't been able to ship something to myself because I can only see it going wrong like the last time. This is, uh, again, this is a mental health thing and it's something I'm working on very, very hard. So... I'm at this nexus point of you need to get a vacuum, and I've been thinking that for a while, obviously. And uh, if someone's going to be by tomorrow. Can you do it? Can you get in your car? And can you go someplace and get a vacuum? Drive down a new street, go to a new place, get a vacuum. You can't, you can't get over the shipping hump. That's an easier hump to get over. Uh, I could always ship it someplace. Uh, I could always ship it to my mailbox, for instance. Uh, but for the life of me, uh, there would also be days where something like that would happen, and then I wouldn't have the energy, guys. I physically wouldn't be able to get up and do it even if I said, yeah, 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 this is the time. Go get the vacuum. This is this is what you've been waiting for. Go do it. Uh, and, and so sometimes it seemed almost by providence or luck that I'd be able to make any forward progress in my life. But yesterday was not one of those days. Yesterday was a series of decisions. Yesterday was a whole series of trying to, as best I can, get my ass into adulting gear. And I did it. I went. I got the vacuum. I got some stuff for the Swiffer. The Swiffer was out of stuff. Uh, I put together the vacuum, vacuumed. I actually was really proud of how my, my carpet looked and put it up on Snapchat. Uh did a very good job. I thought vacuuming my carpet looked really good. Um, <laughs> and that is the health update, right? Not only was I healthy enough to go and do it and then do all those additional components and then come back and assemble them and then clean in the limited window with everything else that I have to do, but uh, I'm fine enough to record this. My health is restored enough that I can do all those things and just sit down and still have the energy to do this. Uh, fingers crossed. I'm definitely going to be taking a nap after the bug guy goes away. He's throwing off my shit, man. Uh, this would normally start being about nap time uh, for me. So I might even get a workout in afterward. I don't have to even think about ordering in or picking something up. Uh, if I do go out, I have the energy to, as it is, uh, in my shit prison kitchen, uh, stand up and cook something for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I'll, I'll, I'll have that. That's not even a question in my mind. And this is when things are not in particularly going amazing or 100%. Uh, this is when life is still happening and hits are still coming behind the scenes, good and bad, everything else. Still, no matter what you think of me, just a human being with human being feelings that I feel all the time, no matter how much I try and consume alcohol and uh, THC to not, to not feel. I try so hard, but I, so far I haven't managed. And uh, 
I just, it's, 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 it's been a real, real journey to get this far. I'm trying not to cry. I am exceedingly grateful for where I am right now, that I don't have to call uh, recreational plans off, that I don't have to call interpersonal plans off, and that I don't have to worry about them on a health level. That as far as being able to get through the next work weeks, months, etc., it's not even a question. Of course I'm going to be able to. And that has helped me so much with my mental health, I think, these last 50 days or so. Uh, it, is, it is only 50 days, or the last 50 days or so, that I realize that I'm not tethered to a chair, that I don't have to be for 12 to 14 hours a day to have enough energy to do anything else. Because I, that was my life for quite some time. And I, I'm still learning what to do with that and how and who to be with it. And if that sounds confusing to you or, or you think a bit overwhelming, then buckle up. Uh, because this is... I'm going to get a little bit more sapping than that. Um, so, a year ago, in March of 2017, when I first realized I was sick and I started getting the cure and I started changing, and, and we figured out to, to a strong degree what was happening, me and the dogs, we... Uh, started talking about changes, physiology, what was going to happen, what to expect. And I don't think there's any way at all that my doctor uh, could know just how little they could prepare me for the changes that were coming down. <clears throat> uh, this, at this time, I'm, I'm still seeing uh, a therapist. Uh, I'm still seeing the same therapist that I was for years and years prior. I'm currently on the search uh, for a therapist now. It's mystery date time, and uh, I'm knocking on doors. So uh, my physiology at this point is, and my discomfort, and my and 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 how painful days in and out are is that after years of seeing this therapist and doing lots of really great work, we are legitimately entertaining the idea around this point of me being psychopathic, not a psychopath, but being of that vein because I don't sleep very much and I'm very numb to the touch and I'm very stilted and I'm very self-centered when I when I get into an emotional I just I just I just want to get home I just want to get home is what I would think to myself and one by one all of these ailments have started to fade away in March 2017 little by little my body which up until this point has been incredibly incredibly stiff to the point where everyone I've ever met, lovers, friends, people on the street, mocked me for how stiff my movements were. Everyone. And it turns out that it's because my joints and, and, and some of the tissue around them, I'm, I'm still not 100% on this, uh, were locked into place. Literally. Imagine someone locking your arms and knees and hips into place and then making fun of you and calling you Frankenstein. Because I didn't know they were locked into place. It's how I always lived my life since I was uh, adolescent, pubescent, and before, to the best of my recollection. So, 
I'm realizing throughout March, especially the tail end of it, incredible things that are making me just break down psychologically. Break down and cry and shake and just question myself and reality. At one point, I, I vomit uh, and, I, and, a, and a bunch of snot uh, comes out of my uh, cranial capacity, uh, uh, cavity. Uh, I don't know, that's one of the sinus cavities, probably not the cranial cavity, yeah. Uh, and I take this inrush of air. And then there's this burning sensation in my head this burning sensation in my head. And I, I, I'm terrified. What is this burning sensation in my head? And I only realize now, not now, but I only realize months later, that burning sensation was legitimately oxygen going through my sinus cavities for the first time in who knows how long. They literally never operated that way. Every time I went and saw an ear, nose, an ear, nose, and throat guy, they would say, oh, your sinuses are blocked. They'd give me something. Uh, that's it. Not even a checkup. I would take the thing. I guess it didn't work. And I didn't know better. This is part, this, this reconstruction of my gastrointestinal system, my sinuses. This is in part why I can and am trying to learn how to sing for you guys. I always wanted to, and I never could. And every time I tried, sometimes, a lot of the time, most of the time, it wouldn't come out right, right? And it was very frustrating for me because I know how to make voices sound different with my mouth and my throat and my larynx, but I couldn't do it from my diaphragm. And it turns out that just like my elbows, just like my knees, just like my hips, they were locked into place. My diaphragm, it wasn't being used right. I wasn't drawing in air correctly. Sometime down the line from there, I think closer to May, perhaps June, and maybe even as late as July, I take my first breath with my lungs only, which I had never done before. I'd always done to some degree diaphragmic breathing and never knew, and just never knew. Another point in which I lost my goddamn mind is I brought my fingers to tap on a keyboard because of course I'm alone and isolated in a room where I'm trying to heal, where I'm sleeping 16 hours a day. There's nobody coming by. There hasn't been anybody in years. So to communicate, I lower my hands down to tap on a keyboard. And I realize that my fingertips have never really felt something before. Every person I've ever touched, everything I've ever grabbed, it was not giving me the full data feedback. Because when, after this episode, after this very violent upheaval episode of, uh, of vomiting and sinus and stuff, I put my hands on the keyboard and I flipped the fuck out because I could feel it. I always thought I could feel it, but I was feeling a very numbed version of it. And every, every press in and all of it, it just connected immediately. I've had balance issues all my life being resolved as well, slowly but surely. I want you to think about all the things that I've listed that were wrong with me that I didn't know were wrong, and then add the PTSD on top of it. Add a back injury. I was in a real, real, real bad way, and I had no idea. Just kept on soldiering through, because that's what I do. It's who I am. Once I learn to adopt and accept something, that's what I want. I want to embrace it and be with it. Stay out of everyone's way. You can't freak out or be freaked out on or be made to feel awful for who you are 
if you just stay out of everybody's way. It's very safe. Uh, and so, of course, the worse my health got, I think the more the more powerful that armor got needed to be to some degree, maybe. Or maybe when the only tool you have is a hammer, then everything really does look like a nail, and the tool I had was perseverance and armor. And so I just kept on building bow through. When I... When I think back on myself in my 20s, in my teens, and the hell that I put myself through to have a better body, to look sexy, to to compete with boys who were taunting me, to to do it all because I felt so bad when someone said that I wasn't pulling my weight or that I wasn't really too tired. If you're tired, if you, if you can sit there, if you can sit there, you can help, right? I heard that so many fucking times and I, I believed it. I don't know if I ever really believed myself. I knew I was sick, but I don't know if I ever really believed myself. I said it over and over again. I kept pointing towards charts that I made of literally every single calorie I consumed in and out. But did I really, really advocate for myself like I would now that I'm not sick? I don't think so. Never once. I'm tireless now, and I could be tired out. And I was really smart, guys, on top of it. So unpleasant, smart, and tire outable. It's not really a big surprise to me that so many medical professionals over the years took that path. As I said, this is the penultimate update. Uh, we're looking at what to do and how to go to head and what's next. And what's next? My hope is that I can continue to make uh, progress in recovery throughout this year as I have in the first three months of it. I, I, I haven't batted a thousand, but overall, I seem to be on the right track. And I hope I can continue for this velocity for some time. I don't know when I'm going to be fully healed up. I don't know when that's going to happen. But I am actively working towards it. And uh, I, I promise you that I want it too. I think, I believe that I am getting stronger and healing up and that I can combine the physical health stuff with the mental health stuff moving forward. Where does this all lead and where does it go? I don't know. I need some time with that. Uh, in fact, that's why the title of this audio is Be Patient With Me. I still don't know. I still don't know what my body is capable of, what its natural setting is, what the right diet for it is, how it feels in the snow, how it feels really in the rain, how it feels with a lover, really. Because the last times I've attempted that, I've been freaked out on some level or another. So it wasn't, it wasn't a real emotional experience, which is what I want. I haven't been able to get it. And I have been trying for it very hard. So I, I need to, I need to continue 
to figure out what health is and how to heal up. And I'm only here, I've only made it this far, because you were patient with me. And I'm going to keep messing up from here. But all I can ask is that you continue to do so. It means the world to me that you are. It means the world to me. Uh, I, I am not so far away from being able to present you guys with more pictures of me, with more information uh, about me. Um, but just to be clear, 2018 is still a year of healing. I'm still not ready to, I don't think I will be at least, ready to unwrap the whole package just yet. Um, and in a way, I cannot begin to tell you how wonderful I think that is. I really, really, really enjoy my day-to-day -day now. I'm fighting my demons. I'm sometimes even winning those fights. And I want to keep it up. I know you want me to keep it up, too. So, I most assuredly will. Uh, I, I think that's it besides the one last time. I'm very, very grateful. I'm very, very grateful for this. Um, for this forum to speak with you guys. Uh, I'm very, very honored to encourage you, uh, those of you who have your own health issues, mental or physical, or both. Um, every time I, I read a message that I have, I smile. Thank you. And I assure you that I have taken your, your time, your emotional patience with me, devotion and patience with me and your money and invested it into a long-term gray night, sustainable, uh, healthy dude who can't wait to do some more things with you. Your, your patience with me thus far has produced pretty amazing results. And I, I'm so excited to see what it finally looks like when I'm done cooking. I'm, I'm impatient for it too, but we're, we're real close, I think. We're, we're closer than I've ever been at any point in my life, and I'm more excited than I've ever been. So, one last time. Thank you.